coming soon to Rosh Hashanah. And it's interesting, when one opens up the Torah, we see that the Torah says very, very little about Rosh Hashanah. It describes it listed as one of the holidays in the book of Ayikra. The Torah says that God spoke to Moshe in chapter 23 of Ayikra, verse number 24, Dabrel b'nei Yisrael emor, b'chodesh ha-shvi'i b'yachad l'chodesh, yeochem shabbaton, zichron t'ruah mikro kodesh. The Torah says very briefly, in the seventh month, the first day of the month, Yom Truah Yelachem. The day shall be a day of Truah. Literally crying out or calling out. A holy convocation. A day forbidden in work. And a day which you bring a special offering, sacrifice. But what does Yom Truah mean? A day of Truah. Our tradition, of course, understands this to mean a day of truah, a day of sounding, making a special sound, which we do with the shofar. The Torah, though, never mentions the shofar specifically in conjunction with Rosh Hashanah. Our tradition interprets the verse that way. Similarly, in the book of Bamidbar, when it lists the various holidays and the special musaf sacrifices that are brought, there too, Vachodesh Vashvi Beachad Lachodesh in chapter 29, Mikrokodesh Yelachem Komrechat Avodarot Tasu, Yom Chua Yelachem. So the Torah calls it a Yom Chua. Actually, in, in Vayikra, he calls it Zichron Chua, the sounding of the shofar. In, in, in Bamidbar, it's Yom Chua. But in any event, it's very unclear what Zichron Chua means and what Yom Chua means. Interesting, we have the tradition of shofar, and the trua is understood by our tradition to be a particular kind of sound. The targum on trua says yom yavava, the day of crying. The trua, a day of brokenness, <coughs> the trua is a broken sound. Exactly the nature of the broken sound, so that we have three possibilities. We have the little staccato sound of the, what we call a trua. We have the shvari, more of a sigh, a wail, and we have the combination of the two, <coughs> first the sigh, and then the staccato sound. The Gemara says that, in, however, in addition to this, the Gemara says, before and after the trua, the broken sound, we have a plain, a plain sound, which they call a, a tekiya. So tekiya, Trua, whether it's Shvarim or Trua, Shvarim, Trua, and then a Tekiya. That's how the Gemara understands, interprets the Zichron Trua and the Yom Trua of Rosh Hashanah. So actually, what's interesting is that, although the Torah says nothing about Shofar on Rosh Hashanah, and certainly nothing about Tekiya and Trua, but the Tekiya Trua idea seems to be imported from a different part of the Chumash, where the Torah does speak about a Tzkiah and a Trua. And that is in chapter 10 of Bamidbo, when it talks not about a shofar, but about the trumpets. And God instructs Moshe to make two trumpets of silver, and they ought to be sounded at various times. In the desert they're sounded when you gather in the various heads of the tribes, where you gather the community together. And they ought to be sounded also when you're about to travel in the desert. The difference is when you bring people together, says the Torah, utkatem tkia. You make the tkia sound. But when you're traveling in the desert, about to travel, you make the trua sound. And then the Torah says in chapter 10, also when you come into the land, on your festivals, on your special days, when you bring sacrifices, you are to sound the tkia sound together with the sacrifice. But when war is arising or some other, uh, some other tr calamity or some other danger, then you are to make the Hari Otem, you are to make the Trua sound, and you will be remembered before God, the Niz Kartem. Sounds very much like the phrase in the book of Ayikra, Zichron Trua. So what is the difference then in that parasha between the Trua and the Tkia? The Tkia, the plain sound, <coughs> is blown 
at times of joy. Joy could be when you're bringing sacrifices on the happy days, Yom Simchatchem, your special days. There's a joy in bringing the community together <coughs> to discuss issues, bring people together for all kinds of reasons. Those essentially are moments that we sound the tekiah. When there's a danger, when there's a war, or when you're traveling in the desert, which is a moment of vulnerability, then the Torah says we have to sound the trua. On Rosh Hashanah, we are sounding the tekiah and the trua, and that's reflective of how the tradition understands Rosh Hashanah. The Torah says very little about Rosh Hashanah. The tradition understands Rosh Hashanah to be two very different things. On one hand, a day of God's presence, it is a festival. On the other hand, our tradition sees Rosh Hashanah as a day of judgment. And this day of Rosh Hashanah, which has these two very different elements, the joy of the festival and the serenity and the, and the fright, the frightening idea of standing before God in judgment, that day itself, the two elements of Rosh Hashanah are very well reflected in the Tzkiah and the Trua. The Tzkiah is a sound you would make on your festivals and special days. The Trua is a sound you make when you're about to go into battle or you're traveling in, in the desert. You, danger of not being in a place, of being out of, out of your place the vulnerability of the, of the journey. And Rosh Hashanah has both of these elements. It's interesting that Tekiya, Trua, and Tekiya. Maybe that's part of the idea of Rosh Hashanah. It starts as Tekiya. It starts as a day of joy. It's a day of God's enthronement. We are proclaiming God as King. That's what Rosh Hashanah is about. It's a festival. And then we are reminding ourselves that the King is also a judge. So we are appealing with the broken sound. And afterwards, after we are reminding ourselves that we are being judged, we are hopeful that we will leave the judgment stronger, not just escape the vindictive side of judgment, but judgment also being calling us into question strengthens us. And then perhaps we sound the second tekiah. Tekiah, trua tekiah. Tekiah beforehand, tekiah with fanela and Pshutari Yachabera, the Tkia after the Trua. Shanat Tovat, Tikatevu, Vatechatevu. We all hope for a good year for all of us. Aksameach.